This is part two in my video series on my search for my new modern guitar. Now in episode one, we took a look at this PRS over here, but today it's time to unleash this. So if you've been following along, you know that I'm on the hunt for a new modern style guitar. I recently put an Engel Powerball 2 uh, high gain amp here in my studio and I realized I just didn't have the right guitar to pair with it. You know, my Gibsons and my Tele style Sir were great for the classic rock stuff, but I'm really on the hunt for something more modern. Now, while this video is not sponsored, I do want to thank my good friends at Long McQuaid, that's Canada's largest musical instrument retailer with stores all over Canada and on the web at long-mcquaid.com, a great resource for all of your musical instrument needs. Make sure to check them out. Uh, they were so awesome in allowing me to bring these guitars home. I'm in the market to purchase one of these guitars, but this way I can dig in here in a familiar environment and I can create some content for you guys. In the first video in this series, Marco from the North Toronto Long McQuaid, affectionately known as North York, handpicked three guitars based on the style of guitar and tone I described to him. He recommended the PRS SE Mark Holcomb, the Schechter C1 SLS Elite, and the Ibanez Axion label RGD61 ALET. All guitars meet my desire for modern specs with modern style pickups, suitability for drop C tunings, and the potential to be a workhorse recording instrument. This Schechter is considered by many to be one of the best values for the money for what really is a moderately priced guitar, but it's loaded with high-end appointments. Now, ultimately, the guitar that I choose here, the main purpose is going to be for recording. So let's flip the script a little bit. Uh, there's a song that I worked on that showcases uh, these guitars in action. Uh, let's check that out so we can hear some tones from this guitar. And then we're going to head over to Long McQuaid and Marco is going to run through all the specs of this guitar. What we have here is the Schechter C1 SLS Elite. This is a mid-priced Schechter guitar. Uh, what we have here are Schechter branded locking tuners at the top with a matching flame maple veneer on the headstock. We also have a Ernie Ball compensated nut for superior intonation, a volute on the back of the headstock. The neck is a seven piece walnut, paduk, I believe, and maple neck with two carbon fiber rods that run on the inside of the neck. It has what Schechter calls their thin C profile, which feels kind of like a very thin D to me, but they might, again, this is all about preference. The fret upper radius is 12 to 16 inch compound, has jumbo stainless steel frets, which I really, really value on a guitar, especially a guitar that's gonna be suited for a workhorse studio instrument. You'll never have to worry about um, fret wear, so crowning or re-leveling will never be an issue with this instrument. An ebony fretboard, these like really interesting zigzaggy type abalone uh, inlays, as well as abalone side dots, spoke wheel truss rod adjustment at the heel, which is very useful for neck relief adjustments, which should be rare with this instrument considering it's multi-ply neck and carbon fiber reinforcements. Plus it just makes the headstock look a lot cleaner and you can really appreciate that beautiful flame maple on the head. 
Next, we have a Swamp Ash body wing design because this is a neck through guitar. So these are Swamp Ash uh, wings here. We have a maple cap with a flame maple veneer. Uh, this one is a veneer, but the 3D effect on the maple is, is very, very pronounced in this sp specific instrument. It also has a body contour and a bit of like a faux carved top thing going on. It's not like super pronounced, but it's definitely there. This is very common on the C1 shapes. So next we have these Fishman Modern pickups. They become very popular in recent times due to the fact that they have a lot of multi-voicing options within them. So there's a three-way blade here, but have individual voicing push-pull knobs here for each individual pickup. So you can have a lot of different combination of sounds from like a regular type of humbucky sound to a more like pushed, overdriven, higher output uh, pickup. Similar to like what you'd find on like an EMG or something like that, even though they're completely different genealogies. Then we have a hip shot bridge, which is very awesome. They make a lot of high-end hardware for a lot of really expensive boutique builders. And it's very awesome to see it on a mid-priced instrument such as this one. Overall, this is a very full-featured guitar. It shares a lot of modern designs packed into one thing, especially with the stainless steel. This is an option that's become a lot more common on modern instruments from the demand of modern players seeking to not have to really care too much about needing a refret, but also they feel buttery smooth and really wonderful to play on. So there's a lot of added benefit to using them. The other thing I'll note is it has a very open pore feel, so you can actually feel the grain of the wood on the seven ply neck. This guitar has been in Schechter's arsenal for a few years now. It has been a tried and tested model. A lot of people have very much grown to love this specific instrument for what it offers at this price point being, you know, neck through, stainless steel, carbon fiber reinforcement, locking tuners, the compensated Ernie Paul nut, the really awesome hardware, the really awesome pickups, like one of those guitars that just straight up doesn't need any modifications at all. If it would be, it would be more to taste. So one thing I'm very curious about your opinion on, Dan, is your opinion on these pickups, because some people tend to shy away more from actives these days, and I'm really interested to see uh, your experience with these specific pickups that have grown very much in popularity in recent years. All right, Marco, since you asked, I'll start with my thoughts on the pickups. So I have to say, I've never owned a guitar with active pickups before. I've been a bit traditional for most of my life, so this is my first exploration into a modern style guitar. So let's start with uh, the first voicing, which is sort of the active 
Boising, um, very aggressive pickup. There's a lot of clarity in there, paired really nicely uh, with the angle amplifier. Uh, it's a definitely a bit tighter, a bit brighter, and in voice mode, uh, the voicing number two, uh, got a little more bottom end, a little rounder on the corners, uh, but they actually pair nicely together in that track I played earlier. I do double track my guitars, and I mix the voice one and voice number two together, so worked really nice together. Uh, you have that combination as well on the neck pickup. And then in terms of clean, a very, very, very different uh, clean tone than I'm used to. But again, that's a good thing as this guitar is specific. I'm looking for something different to add uh, different tones and things to bring here in the studio. So uh, very, very different tones than I'm used to. Now, considering this is kind of a super stratish, the one downside of these pickups is I can't split them. So I'm not getting any single coil tones, uh, which is kind of a shame because they are really great pickups. It's not a deal breaker because that's not the purpose of this particular guitar for me, but certainly having that coil splitting would give me additional options that unfortunately this guitar doesn't offer. But what it does give me, and with the ability to change the voicings, and plus you can blend them with the three-way selector here, so you can put like, you know, voice number one, voice number two, and then blend them, different combinations. Love what I'm getting in terms of that high gain, that humbucker and the bridge present. That humbucker in the bridge position is really the, the main thing I'm looking for in this uh, particular guitar, but there are a lot of different combinations, so it is versatile. Unfortunately, just not gonna get me single coils. That would have been a bonus, uh, but we don't have them here. And talking about this guitar, it begins and ends with this neck. My goodness, this is like the fastest neck that I've ever played. Uh, it is the ultra thin C, I believe they call it, but it doesn't feel so small, though it is the smallest neck in comparison to the other guitars here, but it's super smooth. I mean, this open pore finish is really nice. You get a little extra satin on the neck itself, as opposed to the ash wings that's a, a little more open pore, uh, but very, very, very comfortable. And the fact that it's a neck through body design, we have no heel here, so easy access to the 24th fret. In fact, you can give me a couple more frets and I could reach those as well. So really, really enjoy this neck uh, very much. And I'm kind of liking a fast neck, at least having an option, you know, a smaller neck, it's really comfortable. I just seem to get around smaller necks a little bit better for certain things. So it certainly would be nice to have something like this, but love the look of this guitar. This, this top is really, really beautiful. You've got binding all the way around on the body, on the neck and the matching headstock as well, which is a nice touch. Uh, so really enjoying that. Uh, by the way, back to the neck, something I do want to mention about this. It is an ultra thin neck, but I noticed there's a little bit of play with it. Uh, I'm a bit of an aggressive player and I have a tendency sort of to pull a little bit, but I do notice that I'm pulling out of tune occasionally. Now, that's not going to be a deal breaker because I'm actually trying to lighten my touch a little bit because sometimes, you know, I'm playing my hands are getting a little tired a bit more these days and I'm finding, you know, playing lighter actually helps. So this guitar is going to warn me if I'm playing too hard because you can see there's a little bit of movement there. So if you're a real aggressive player, something to think about and something I do have to think about when I in looking at all of these guitars, but just something I wanted to note, very stable. I'm not saying there's any lack of stability here, but it is a thinner neck and it just seems to be a little bit more pull than if it was like a, you know, a stockier uh, bolt-on neck or something like that. Uh, the one down thing with this guitar, these are locking tuners, but I'm finding the ratio not great. Now at this price point, I'm kind of looking for a complete solution here. There's still maybe a little wiggle room if I want to upgrade, because again, that's an easy thing to upgrade, uh, but the tuners are good, but they're just not great. We're gonna see if they're passable. I'm gonna play with this a little bit more, and then obviously in comparison to these other two guitars. But I did want to mention for me, I'm just finding the, the ratio not great. It's gonna tune a little extra here to find that note. Once we're in, it seems pretty stable, um, but uh, not the best feature of this guitar. Oh, by the way, the, the carve outs on the body as well, the belly cut and a little the sort of carved top feel here. Really nice, it feels really comfortable. But again, the neck to me is the number one feature on this guitar, without a doubt. Love the look of it, the aesthetic is great. Uh, pickups are really, really great. Unfortunately, no coil splitting, but what you get uh, works really well for me. And the one downside or the main downside I would say about this guitar, unfortunately, is again, these tuners. Well, there you have the Schecter C1 SLS Elite. A lot to like about this guitar. A couple concerns. Is it going to be enough to put this one over the top or will one of these other guitars ultimately be the one I choose to buy? Well, there's one more to check out and that's the Ibanez with the Evertune bridge. If you're watching this in real time, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell so you'll be notified when the Ibanez video drops. If this is sometime in the future. Make sure to check the description. There's a playlist to videos for all of these guitars and the finale when I decide 
which guitar I'm going to buy and why. Well, it's at this point, I want to thank my good friends at Long McQuaid once again for being so supportive of this channel and providing awesome equipment so I can share it with you guys. Long-McQuaid.com for all of your musical instrument needs. And if you're in Canada, with almost like 100 stores, I'd never want too far away. And a special mention to Marco, Mark, and Frank at the North York location. You guys always make me feel welcome when I come in, into that store. Always so hospitable, and I really appreciate that. And I look forward to diving into the next video with you guys. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, as I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you really want to support this channel, if you check the description, I have a list of all sorts of affiliate links, including gear that I have here in my studio, plus essentials if you're starting your own studio. Uh, none of those links cost you any extra, but if you're on the market to buy something, it will kick back a little something to the studio. It helps me bring more content like this uh, to you, and I really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to do a deeper dive with me, I am on Patreon. I also have merch. A lot of ways to support the channel. It's all in the description, and I really appreciate that. But the easiest and free way to support this channel is watching another video. And I've got one waiting for you right here. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video.